In this tutorial, we're going to discuss Ansible automation. In particular, Ansible Engine, that is run from the CLI. We will start by discussing the challenging landscape that is forcing us to move to the world of automation. I will also introduce to you Ansible Playbooks and the other Ansible main components. So we have a lot of environmental challenges that are forcing enterprises to move to the world of automation, in particular automation with Ansible. Firstly, distributed computing. Today it's common to deploy applications by combining multiple services that run on a distributed set of resources. And if you are configured manually, you will likely be maintaining all of these settings manually too. Manipulating configuration files by hand is tedious and will be error prone. The manual approach will result in configuration drift, where some servers will drift from the desired state. And Ansible is all about maintaining the desired state and eliminating any configuration drift, errors and complexities that happen when maintaining large application deployments. So Ansible ensures that the managed assets current state meets the desired state and it does this with playbooks more specifically yaml playbooks they have plays that call specific tasks that execute different modules on the target hosts ansible uses ssh to linux mac os and bsd machines and winrm to connect to windows machines then we have the network devices that can be managed over HTTPS or SSH. So once installed, Ansible will not add a database and there will be no daemons to start or keep running. So it's important to note the following. Ansible runs each task in parallel across all of the hosts. Ansible waits until all hosts have completed a task before moving to the next task. Ansible runs the tasks in the order that you specify them. The Ansible inventory is all about telling Ansible about your managed assets. And Ansible can manage only the servers it explicitly knows about. Keep in mind that Ansible comes with one default server of localhost, which is the control host. Inventories can be static or dynamic, or even a combination of both. And Ansible is not limited to a single inventory. The inventory in Ansible is a very flexible object. Then we have Ansible modules, and these are considered to be the main workhorse of Ansible. You can use modules to perform various tasks, such as installing a package, restarting a service, or copying a configuration file. An Ansible playbook can have multiple plays that can exist within a single Ansible playbook that can execute on different managed assets. So Ansible play is all about what am I automating? And then it connects to the hosts to perform the actions. So once a playbook is parsed and all the hosts are determined, Ansible is ready to execute a task. A task will include a name, a module reference, module arguments, and any task control directives. So Ansible is not only easy to understand, but just with a few lines of YAML, which is a language used for Ansible, you can install, let's say, web servers on as many hosts as you like. So Ansible is really good at scaling. And for example, Ansible uses advanced features such as SSH multiplexing to optimize SSH performance. It also provides mechanisms for decomposing complex jobs into smaller pieces. So we can bring the concept of modularity into playbooks as playbooks become more complex. Then we have plugins that are used to extend the Python code on the Ansible control host. So plugins are a piece of code that augment Ansible's core functionality with logic and features that are accessible to all modules. The most popular plugins are the lookup and the filter plugins. So in this short tutorial, we discussed Ansible automation, in particular Ansible engine that is run from the CLI. 
We started by discussing a change in landscape. That is forcing us to move to the world of automation. We also introduced Ansible playbooks and the other main Ansible components.